Welcome into another edition of Locked On NFL Insider Report. Peter Bukowski from Locked On Packers joining me. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. And of course, the Aaron Rodgers saga it seems like it changes every day, Peter. I'm going to allow you to have your victory lap. <laughs> you said he was coming back. You were always on that train. And that's exactly what we found out today. So I know you weren't surprised, but are you happy to hear the news? Well, I, I think what it does is it, is it vindicates everyone in the process because Aaron Rodgers has said all along he wants to feel uh, like the Packers want him to be there, like he's a part of their long-term plan. That was part of why he was so frustrated last year was they were talking contract, but it was always, well, let's restructure and then go from there. And it's like, no, I I want, I just want the MVP. You have to pay me my money. And he says it wasn't about the money. It's always a little bit about the money. And we don't know what the contract details are yet, but I think you also have to credit This front office, this coaching staff, Matt LaFleur has been steadfast from the beginning. This is our guy. They really like Jordan Love, but Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. And and Brian Gutekunst, I think, deserves also a lot of credit for saying, I need to fix this. Not being too proud to stand on Jordan Love, who he traded up in the first round and took a lot of flack for doing it, including from this guy. Um, And for him to say, I need to fix this. I need to work on this opening up to Aaron Rodgers and Rodgers, who I thought was, was really honest about it a couple of weeks ago on Pat McAfee show. when he said, I realized that it takes two people to have a broken relationship and it takes two people to fix it. And that was the most direct responsibility that I had heard him take for what went down. That was, that was almost enough for me to just be like, if he, if he's saying that, if he's admitting some sort of fault, that means he's working toward being back here. Ultimately he is, and the Packers now have the shortest odds in the NFC, according to Bet Online, to, to be the, the Super Bowl champs next season. So that makes me happy. And rightfully so. I think we can all be happy that, you know, we've seen enough of these cases where, you know, players disgruntled, the ownership, you know, wants to stand their ground, and then everybody ends up losing, and it's just kind of crappy for everybody. So for them to find a way to make this work, I think, is best case scenario for the team and for Rodgers probably as well. Money-wise, we don't know a ton of details at this point, but before this started, there was questions of how they were even going to like field a team around him with the <laughs> amount of money that he's going to want. So from what we do know, how is that kind of coming together right now? Well, so what we, what we knew had to happen was his number is almost $47 million on the cap this season. Untenable given the Packers situation. And, and he knew that. The Packers knew that when they reworked his deal last year. When he came back and they figured something out, whatever they figured out, whatever handshake agreement they got, it was that next off season, whether implicitly or explicitly, it's retire or trade or extension. Those are the only circumstances. He was never going to play on the contract as written uh, in the 2022 season. They made the number so big that a decision would have to be made. So that number is going to come down. Ian Rappaport has, has backed off his initial reporting um, on the, on the details, but we know the number is going to come down. The number is going to come down further in 2023 when the cap is set to explode. And then probably the numbers will jump in 24, 25. So the, the window is at, at the very least 2022, probably 2023. And then they'll figure it out from there. They need that cap flexibility to resign Devonte Adams, uh, to resign Devondre Campbell, who is just all pro in his first season in green Bay. He is an unrestricted free agent. Uh, Russell Douglas, who came in in relief of Jair Alexander and played awesome football at the end of the year. Um, He is also an unrestricted free agent. And and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who is one of the best deep threats in the league two years ago, led the league um, in in, uh, explosives and yards per catch. So he is someone that, that has said he wants to be back. The Packers have said they'd like to try and keep him. They need this cap flexibility to, as you said, not just field the team, but field a potential Super Bowl team around Aaron Rodgers because he said, I don't want to be a part of a rebuild. That's not what's happening in Green Bay. So obviously they had the first biggest step done with Rodgers, and now they got to figure out the remaining parts there. But, you know, they had a great team last year. Was there some, was it some of the off field stuff that really kind of hindered them when it got to the postseason? Do you think, or like what really held them up? I know it was a weird season, so it's hard to say, but like, are they going to be in a better position going forward? You hope so. I mean, you, you hope so, right? Um, I, Brian Gutekind's words were telling in his, his combine press conference um, or his pre-combine press conference. He said, I don't see holes on our roster. I don't see places where we need to get better. I see a team 
that needs to play better when its best is needed. That were, that was basically his message to the team is like, this team was good enough. That's why it was so frustrating as Packer fans to watch the way the season ended, because this was supposed to be the team you hit on fringe roster guys that turn into stars, Devondre Campbell and Russell Douglas, who I mentioned you, you add Whitney Merciless who got hurt, but you, you get this play from an offensive line that was banged up all season. All of a sudden, David Bakhtiari is able to come back at the end of the season. Zadaria Smith comes back at the end of the season. Jair Alexander comes back at the end of the season. This was the time to go win a Super Bowl. Now, luckily, Jair Alexander, they're talking contract extension with him. He's already under contract for 2022, so that part's not a problem. This is a very good young team, and so that makes this all a little bit easier. But if if the question is, why do I think this will be any different than, than the last two years? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have any reason to believe that. And so until we see it, I don't know how you can believe it. Now, part of it is no Tom Brady. Yeah. Russell Wilson is now in the other conference. Um, the Rams are going to take some hits to, to their roster. And the 49ers, who's playing quarterback? So it's sort of just like the Packers are the favorites in the NFC because they have a really good roster for sure. But also by default, like who is better than them? You you look around and you go, I don't know. It's, it's Green Bay. And so they, they're not only the favorite right now, they deserve to be the favorites. But why, why should we think it's going to be different? Right now, I, I don't think we, we don't have a reason to think that. Aaron Rodgers is coming back. At this point, do we know how long this is going to be for realistically? Because obviously there's contract numbers and whatnot, but is this it? Or are we going to do this again soon? <sighs> We really need to see the numbers on that contract. That's, I mean, that's going to be crucial because if this is really a two-year deal with void years or it's a a, a one-year deal that, that could be a two-year deal and then the, the back half are, are fake years to stretch out the the um, the guaranteed money and and the, the signing bonus and to make the numbers work so that his cap hits are small, all of the accounting things that are not fun to talk about but are really important in fielding a team. The Saints have been like putting everything on the credit card for like the last 10 years. Um, and it's been fine. So you can do it, but you have to do it. Um, so yeah, I, it, that, that part is, that part is really tricky. Um, and, and even then maybe we don't know because I, I would have told you in July that this was the last ride, that this was it for Aaron Rodgers. And I started to come around about October. Um, he was spending so much time with the guys showing all this gratitude on social media and you know, you never know what's real on social, right? Mm -hmm. But when he dropped, I own you on the bears, I was like, how can this guy walk away from the game? Like he's still obviously like he doesn't love anything more in the world than beating the bears. Why would you walk away from number one, that rivalry, but number two football, that's why I never bought the retirement stuff. And, and so uh, he can play until he's Tom Brady, right? Mm -hmm. 43 is, is how long this contract will take him. Tom Brady, 43, when he just retired, I'm sure he would love every opportunity to play until he's the same age as Tom Brady was when he retired and see how many Super Bowls he can amass. He can't catch Tom by then. Just the math doesn't work, but he can, he can put a couple in there if, if the Packers are able to do that. And that is, and he knows this enormous for his legacy. He is someone who cares deeply about his legacy in green Bay how the fans perceive him and his place in football history. And that's ultimately why I think, um, not why I think, but one of the reasons why I think he chose to stay in Green Bay. He's he's talked about wanting to be Tim Duncan, wanting to be Kobe Bryant and Dirk Nowitzki and these guys that stay with one team their whole career. It doesn't happen in, in sports really that often. And we just saw with Tom Brady, we saw with Peyton Manning, even the greats have to change teams sometimes. And I think this is for Aaron Rodgers, a, a chance for him to write the ending that he feels his career deserves whenever that is. And you don't want to leave that rivalry. You don't want to leave that division. Those are all good places to be, right? Um, uh, remains to be seen what that contract is exactly. We're going to have to keep tuned in with you, Peter, to see exactly what the details of that are going to mean long term. But we appreciate your immediate analysis. I'm Kainani. Thank you for joining us today on Locked on NFL.